In these uncertain times, it's become even more important to have an emergency or rainy day fund. But according to Pew Research, 53% of Americans say they do not have a rainy day fund that would cover at least three months of their expenses. So we want to bring in senior wealth advisor at uh, Payne Capital Management, Courtney Dominguez, to talk us through this. Uh, Courtney, you know, when people think about saving money, they can do that. But we always hear this benchmark of three months of your expenses and it really seems overwhelming. What advice do you give your clients about saving for a rainy day? I think um, a few things. Number one, if you can automate this, that's probably the easiest way of doing it, where a lot of your online savings, just your regular bank you can go to and set it up so you have an automatic, maybe it's only $20 you can start with or a couple hundred dollars you can start with, but have it on a certain date each month that goes into savings so you don't even have to think about it. It's going to start building up on its own. Because if you see the money in there, you'll spend it. But if it automatically goes to another account, you have a better chance of getting there. And I think right now is probably a really good example of a lot of people, interestingly enough, are actually getting more income on unemployment than they are when they're working and we have nowhere to spend it. Or you have people who maybe are working, but they're still getting a stimulus check, which is additional money. So if you're one of those people, just use this as an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm getting this extra income right now. Why don't I use this to start adding to my emergency fund if I don't have it already? So here's a question that we get often from viewers, uh, Courtney. Where should people be putting the emergency fund? Should they invest it? Um, investing it is not the wise choice with your emergency fund. I think right now is a really good example. If we were just talking two, maybe three months ago, um, a lot of people were saying, oh, the markets are doing so well, let's put our money in there. And even now you're saying, oh, the markets are down, but let's put the money in. You have no idea where the markets are going to be today or tomorrow. The last thing you want to do is put your emergency fund in the stock markets and then there's a further dip. And maybe you put 5000 in there, now it's only worth 3000 and then you have an emergency. That's the last situation you want to be in. So your emergency fund should be something like cash, a CD, a money market, something that's really short-term, liquid. It's not going to fluctuate in value because it's there for emergency purposes. It's not for investment purposes. Yeah, and I would think you would want it someplace where you don't have easy access to it, but when you really need it, uh, you don't have to wait, you know, three weeks to get the money uh, to, to, to pay your rent or whatever. Um, when trying to figure out how to do this, though, um, everyone understands that a rainy day fund is really important, but they also have debts. They're also, you know, building their financial future, maybe their retirement. Um, how do you sort of prioritize? What do you do first? Do you do debts first? Do you do the rainy day fund first? Can you do everything at the same time? Um, ideally, doing it at the same time is great. But yeah, I think if we were to prioritize this, your emergency fund really should be number one. Right now, it's just such a great example. It doesn't really matter what industry you're in. Jobs are really not as secure as people thought they were just a couple months ago. So having that emergency fund is going to be a lot more less stress on your life and make sure you can still pay the bills if there is a period where you're injured or you're sick or you lost your job. Um, once you have your emergency fund set, if you have any sort of high debt, like maybe credit card debt, definitely work on paying that off because it's going to be a lot harder to meet your other financial goals if you have some high interest debt that you're trying to pay down. Once you have both of those established, then you can start investing for some of your longer term goals. And I think that really one, two, three is how you should prioritize that. Hmm. And Courtney, what are some possible sources of emergency cash that people could tap into? You know, you often uh, hear a lot of people who are, you know, especially now when things are looking very bleak for people, they think about tapping into, for example, their retirement accounts, which, you know, carry really, really high penalties. Um, so, you know, give some give give our viewers some sound advice as to where they could draw that potential emergency cash if they had to. Yeah, retirement accounts, I agree, is really only an emergency that you'd need to tap into those. Ideally, you want to leave that till retirement. But you were actually talking about those penalties. And the positive news, if you don't have an emergency fund and you are in a financial emergency right now, they have actually waived a lot of those penalties and made it, you have easier access to retirement money right now. So 
if you have an emergency, you can take a loan against a 401k, which isn't a bad way of doing it because you aren't, um, that's not a taxable event, assuming you pay it back. And there is interest involved, but you're paying it back into your 401k. Um, taking money from an IRA, that did become possible to waive your fees. However, it is likely still going to be a taxable event. So I would try to, unless you have to, try not to tap into any IRA money. Um, but one other thing I think beneficially that's happened right now is interest rates have come down. So if you have a mortgage on your home or looking to refinance your mortgage as a way of getting additional cash right now, it's a really low cost way of borrowing additional money. So that can be another um, source to tap into if you don't already have an emergency fund set up. Yeah, that's good advice. Make sure your credit rating's tight, though. Make sure it's good. Yeah. Um, Courtney, thank you so much.